Hi guys, welcome back to another video and uh, it's a very different surroundings I'm sure you probably noticed if you followed uh, mine and Steve's video before but Steve invited me over to his place today because you might have already seen it in the intro, his new guitar. So what I kind of want to do today in this video is A, have a look at this guitar, I'm yet to even touch it. Uh, it's a sure, sir. sir, I can never pronounce it, maybe it's yes, a country sir. accent. Just say yes sir. sir, there you go, that's a tip for anyone watching <laughs> if you can't pronounce it, it's yes sir. So it's a Sir Legacy. Legacy, there we go. This is a off the cuff because I literally know nothing about this guitar. We've literally turned the camera on just now, all right? So. Yeah, and kind of learn a bit more about it. All I know about Yes Sir is <clears throat> they're a lot of money, I do know that. They're highly, highly, highly rated guitars from anyone I've ever seen use them or buy them. And that's kind of all, I, and I know Mark Knopfler, his Penser connection um, yeah. from Preacher. Uh, well, pretty, pretty, the, 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 his, the history was John Sir um, was working as a guitar builder for Penser, Rudy Penser, yeah. in New York. Yeah. Um, so Mark had um, had a few Penser Sir guitars. They were Penser Sirs then. But as though yeah. that was pre the company Sir as a Absolutely, builder. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. So the, the guitar Knopfler um, used, uh, he sort of um, used it for the first time at the Mandela concert in 88, was very, very similar to this. Yeah. And it says Penser Sir on the headstock. Um, and then many years later, John Sir starts his own company up, starts making his own guitars. He was a master builder at Fender uh, yeah. for a while. Um, so he started his own company up and they um, eventually they started reproducing um, a replica of Mark Knopfler's guitar, but he couldn't call it a Mark Knopfler guitar. Yeah. Uh, Pencers still make what they call the MK1, I think, which is the Mark Knopfler one. Yeah, yeah. Um, which has got a few differences. Um, but John Sir is basically, because this was his design yeah. uh, originally, so he, he makes this, which in is tribute a, to a, it, in tribute to it, which yeah. is as close to you as, as you can get to it. Yeah. And a more slightly a more affordable point, I should say, than the Pensa the version. Pensa, yeah. um, but with basically the same specs. Yeah. Um, there's just a few differences which we can talk about. Um, but perhaps before we do that, do you wanna this is the first time it, it is the first not only this guitar, a sir I'm really okay. gonna struggle with that. <laughs> sir. A sir. A sir. It's my hair of production. I can't. It's the H you can see in the word, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah my sir. I'll get it in my head as we go, and maybe you will as well. But yeah, it, it'd be the first Sir I've ever played full stop, never mind just this one. Okay. So I've, I've obviously seen lots of them online. Yes. And this one is, as you say, very Mark knopfler -y kind of thing. Yes, it is. Which, if you've seen our videos before, you'll know that Steve is I'm massive fan to of him. Yeah, you know. Knopfler. Yeah. And um, there's another funny one to say with a silent K and N and Knopfler, all that. Knopfler, that's true. Knopfler, yeah. Knopfler. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> lots of tricky words to say. But yeah, let, let's have a look at it. Let's get hands on with Are it. You ready? Uh, and I'll, I'll it's the first you, time you've had your hands on a sir. Yeah, and like I said, I, I, I have no experience with them at okay. all. There you go. Okay, so <laughs> it actually probably a little bit lighter than I thought it'd be, given all the hardware and the lock and tuners, the Floyd and everything else. It's a lovely weight, isn't it? So yeah, they're very balanced. Um, I'll turn it down because I'm not going to get yep. the sound just yet. The neck is, I would say, modern Fender. It's a yep. little slimmer than maybe a vintage style. It's compact radius. Is it? Yep, compact radius. But very comfortable to get your hand around. I can feel it's a bit wider here. That's right. And yeah. flatter. Yeah. And yeah, this feels a bit more traditional up here. 10 to 14, I think, radius wise. Yeah. I think. Like I said, balancing feels good. I've got to smell it because that's just the thing with guitars that are expensive. They've got to smell yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> it smells like a guitar. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to have that Gibson. It smells of my kind of sweat because I've just done nothing but play it since I've had it. But yeah, I mean the fret work as well is, is very nice. What a little bit bigger than like a vintage Fender yep. fret size. Not too big. But they're though. not massive, that's for no. sure. Each each sir is plecked, you see. Every single sir is plecked. Yeah, I, I'd say they're like a traditional medium jumbo yeah. rather than like a modern, you know, fat jumbo that you might see on the PRS DGT, for yeah, example. Absolutely. Um Rosewood, I'm guessing. Proper In, rosewood. Indian rosewood. Yeah. Clay dots. I'll come in a bit closer here actually because let me show you as I sort of look at it in real time. That, that rosewood is super uniform all the way across. Give you a sort of glint of the shiny frets there as well. No sort of finishing on the neck that's like sticky or obvious. No, it's pretty satisfying. It's, it's, it? um, it's not unfinished, but it is very sort of smooth and 
nearly feels unfinished sort of yeah. thing. And like I said, fret ends there as well. All pretty, pretty nice work. So now I'm going to point out the bit of an elephant in the room for me, although this is very not flurry, and that's the Floyd Rose. Yeah. And it is a real Floyd Rose by the looks of it, not it's, like a no. copy or anything. No. So obviously, if you've watched our videos before, you can see a. I've got rid of the gold or my sweat has oh, yeah. taken the gold off already. Yeah, yeah. Was but this I, brand new to you as well? Yeah, I've only, oh, there you go. I've had it a month and I've taken rose. the gold off already. Yeah, yeah, it is very slightly faded around there. So, real Floyd Rose, but looking at the guitars that I've seen you kind of have in the past for gigging for X, Y, and Z, Clapton Strap just here, for example, I wouldn't have ever thought a Floyd was your thing. So, what's, no. what's going on with a Floyd? Um, Okay, so this this was a this was kind of a bucket list guitar because of my I'm such a fan of Knopfler. Knopfler had the Floyd Rose on his, but his was blocked off. Yeah. So the reason he had it was for the tune stability. So he toured all over the world with it. It was blocked off, so you couldn't move it. But these things stay in tune unbelievably. It's it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've got to say they are so comfortable at re resting your palm on it. Um, it's so. Yeah, there's nothing like a strap. There's no sharp out. edges yeah. whatsoever. And I do use the trem every now and then. And when I want to use it, I really want to use it. And I don't want yeah. to be thinking about tuning. And it should be said, this is a gigging guitar. For it's you, a gigging guitar, like. yeah. And I've already rehearsed 10, 12 hours with it. Oh, yeah. It's just a dream. You, so you, you, as someone who isn't maybe forever a Floyd user, you have no worries with this thing at all? No, all I've got to do is usually just turn each one of those tiny bits to the left or tiny bits to the right, depending on if it's gone yeah. cold or warm. But to be honest, I, it's never sounded out of tune since I bought yeah. it. And I've dive bombed a lot, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. For those who are not um, familiar with the Floyd yourselves, by the way, uh, these sort of things you can see on the back of the bridge, they're fine tuners. They won't give you a huge range of tuning, but they'll give you enough to tweak it. Because obviously, you see up here, that's locked at the net. So turning these will do nothing. You could cut the strings off there if you want. Yeah, yeah, well, I wouldn't, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what these fine tuners we're talking yeah. about, just in case. One thing to bear in mind, though, Floyd. you've got to be patient when you are restringing a Floyd Rose. Would you do one at a time? I used um, to. <laughs> When I used to have Floyd's in, if I didn't need setting up, you should. I'd do one at a time. But I'm I'm the type that wants to clean all the frets every time I change the string. Yeah, same. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what I do, I, I block off this bit so it yeah. doesn't come back, and then I just stretch all the strings out. Make sure it's perfectly in tune up here first before I lock this. Yeah. And then basically make sure all these fine tuners are halfway up. So you got so the room, got either, room way. either way. Yeah. Um, yeah, have we got any splitting or anything here? No, all that's what I want to switch? talk about really because the difference so, between just bring this in one it. again. You got the AMG, the AMG active pickups there and yeah. HSS configuration. That's a good angle of this top, by the way, as well. Uh, yeah, lovely bit. Of the the colour and the quilt is is super nice on that. So sorry, the pickups. Yep. Yeah, so um, a standard. So the Mark Knopfler one has got the AMG. But pickups. maybe you can go through them as we yeah, talk sure. about and give us some sounds on it. So pickup selection is the same as Knopfler's. So the AMG active. So they're super quiet. They sound just. No. <laughs> So, so what, what are the positions then, so say got, like a strap would we've be? We've got this position here, which is the neck. Yeah. So pretty familiar to us all. Then you've got yeah. the, the king of positions on this guitar, in my opinion, is, is these two. Yeah, so it's still acting like a strap there. Yeah. And Knopfler would have used that position for like... Later years when he used this guitar and yeah. it is super sweet. I absolutely love it. It's really dynamic, you know. It's just got that tiny bit of honk. Do you know what I'm already picking up on in the room? Uh, we are just using a room mic here, by the way, which is sunk straight into the video. Look. look at that. When did that happen? So what I'm noticing in the room, and uh, we are just using a room mic, by the way, just um, you know, so you can kind of hear what, what I'm hearing but is the hi-fi nature of that versus maybe what I'd be used to with a strap. Yeah. It, it does have a super kind of yeah. hi-fi nature, which is something a lot of people do criticise with, with yeah. active pickups, isn't it? Yeah. It's that hi-fi nature, and you, you can definitely hear that. Yeah. However, it still doesn't sound like a hot pickup. It's no. hi-fi, but not hot. No, they are quite high output line. Yeah, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure they are being active yeah, pickups, but pickups. in the tone, it sounds but you, clear. You can get that sweet sort of... And then if I went to this humbucker at the back. Yeah. That's almost like a 
almost phasey there. Yeah, it's, it, it's quite honky, but it's, it's, it's actually massive output, you know. Yeah. In fact, it's overdriving. Yeah. Back to where we were. Yeah, that's great. You have the touch of yeah. And then middle pick up, just the usual. <laughs> Neither here nor there, really. And then this one is the humbucker in this one. So, so, like position so I don't think this is split, I think this is the whole humbucker in that one, because yeah. there is a slight <laughs> bit of bite to it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas on a strat that would be super clean and honky. Yeah. This is why I prefer this position. Because you're, you're getting the two singles rather yeah. than a humbucker and a single. And that one is, you know. <laughs> so, um, Gilmore would have used these as well, but with an EMG um, single coil on his red strap. Yeah. Um, so a lot of players have used these, particularly in the 80s. Uh, and, and I think one of the reasons was um, single coils were interfering with the sound on stage. Well, they do, didn't they? That's yeah. the thing. But... So they went to lace sensors, Clapton went to lace yeah. sensors, and a lot of people went to EMGs. Uh, but then you actually got used to the sound. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, I like regular pickups. I like these pickups. Yeah. It's not, I prefer one over the other. I just, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but you can get these to sound as you know, like a strat if you want to. But it's kind of its own thing, I would yeah. say. Yeah, I think for me, like you, with active pickups, because like you just said, that they are. If you were to measure them and just put a number on a screen, you're going to say that's well off. Oh, it's crazy. Because yeah, it's these yeah. is twenty. Well, well, there you go. No. But that doesn't tell the story of, of EMGs to me. No. But what does though is that clarity hi-fi thing. Yeah. It, it does. It has vintage tones in it, especially like you yeah. said that tone there. Yeah. It's just that they're way more hi-fi. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, they don't feel like they want to kill you and they're jumping out the guitar like a spiky P90 or something. Yeah. And bear in mind, we're going through a Line 6 Helix and a Head Rush. Yeah. Which, you know, if I put this to a, a Fender Twin, yeah. it'd probably sound a bit different. Of course, yeah. Um, you got, and, yeah, you know, so if I put a bit of crunch, a bit of crunch on... <laughs> But then up here it'd be just But it could be how I've tuned the line six and the head rush to my tastes. Yeah. Of but I think this would sound completely different to a valve amp, you know. Yeah. Um but ultimately EMGs, they are sweet sounding Very. pickups. Yeah, yeah. Um and they are just And obviously for for a gig guitar, yeah. Like, yeah, easy, gonna easy to away. listen to. Yeah, and yeah. um, you know, I can do what I'll, with this configuration. Obviously, uh, you can go heavy, or you can go quiet without really changing your settings. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but it's um, being a not for a fan. This is this is just like a dream guitar, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's just, just. I mean, I could have gone for the one with the uh, the regular. I think it's a regular go to tremolo. Yeah, but I thought let's try it, and actually. I haven't looked back since I've been getting the Floyd Rose. It makes no difference in terms of... Well, I mean, of, to be fair... It like, doesn't if, get in the way or, yeah. you know... I mean, uh, if you trust it, why well, don't, you know, you're a gigging guy and if you're saying that you have zero worries there with that yeah. trend, even though maybe a lot of your own guitars, as I say, this one, the DGT, yeah. all the others that you've seen, you know, it hasn't put you off kind of thing. No. It's got a Floyd on it, so... No, I... I it I does a, seem pretty I, solid. I did have a Charvel uh, once uh, with the Floyd Rose, a yeah. licensed Floyd Rose, and actually yeah. it was really enjoyable to play, but it, it, it didn't have a very nice neck on it. Yeah. Uh, but this just feels so comfortable to me. Um, and on the Charvel, this locking nut actually was really sharp. Yeah, yeah. But this is just perfect. It doesn't get in the way at all, and I just forget about it, to be honest. Yeah. And with my palm resting on there, Apart from taking the off the lovely off. finish. That's inevitable, that's just sorry it's gonna happen. Tear, really. It's just so comfortable, to be honest. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't have to worry about tuning it, to be honest, at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've adjusted the truss rod once since I've had it. Yeah, um, where's that done, by the way? I've not seen, I guess it's up there. I've got the top end. So if we talk about the differences with Mark Knopfler's Pensa, sir. Yeah. Um, he, he's got, I think he's got a boost um, switch. So yeah. I've got a feeling he can possibly pull one of these out and you get like a mid boost, I think. Don't quote mm. me on it, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, you've got a black knob there. <laughs> um, there's, there's the money. There's, there's the money. <laughs> this is blocked off, obviously, so he doesn't use the trim to get. Yeah. Uh, I think his truss rod is um, adjusted down this end. Yeah. He's also, which I was jealous about, has got two Allen key 
holders on the back. Oh, yeah, I've which is such a brilliant before. idea to yeah. have them where you can take the strings off when you want. So what I did, I bought a third party little Allen key. I did wonder what that was. Yeah, I just, so yeah. It's, it's called a hex hider and it fits, basically it fits the um, uh, the pins uh, to okay. take the strings out yeah. of and the pins to up and down the, this bit and oh, the lock and trim. And it's got a magnet on the back and it just, it just sticks to the tuners. Nice little idea. Yeah. Um, if you need, got an emergency, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not for just got a few little tweaks, and obviously we've got a carved top. Yeah. Um, now the carved top versions of these are quite more expensive. Right. Uh, but I find this super comfortable. It's, but it, it's still got the there. contours, isn't it's it? It's got so. the contour there. It's it's much lighter than a Strat, I think. A bit tiny bit thinner, maybe. Uh, you've got a lovely top on it, and they are Sir's own uh, locking tuners. They used to use Spurzels. Years right. ago, but he just got his own branded tuners on there now. Yeah, they're possibly made by Spurs anyway. J yeah. Just looking at it, everything you think you know about Sir, as in the fit and finish is amazing. Yeah, the attention to detail, the fretwork, everything like that in the in person is true. You know, you can tell this is a crazily highly crafted guitar. Yeah. It just yeah. feel, guitar just feels a certain way when it's at that level, and that has it. Yeah. But I suppose what that leads me on to that sort of asking you there is what what do you think takes someone to a sir in general not just a knock flip thing yeah over a custom shop which you've owned before over a prs american which again you've owned before yeah just over anything that's a bit more um, um well i think once you've played one it kind of answers the question um yeah they only make guitars for themselves yeah every guitar is made in the same place so they don't make, they don't make affordable versions and yeah. i think sometimes a company could get bogged down with all the other side of producing cheaper guitars or whatever and they're fine i've had good pra prs's i've had yeah bad for PRS's. sure we've talked about it loads of times yeah with cheaper um, guitars th uh, this is the second sir i've owned and i've played a few others and i've never ever played a bad one because i think they all go through such incredible quality control mm. yeah yeah um and the fl every all the frets are collected before it comes out i've got the action on this lower than any other guitar i've owned and it still doesn't buzz or fret out or anything like that no and i think what it is when when it came i opened the case and it was just and i'm a fussy bugger yeah. when it came it was in tune sir sir ships all their guitars in tune yeah uh, unlike a lot of brands don't ask me why but he does um the action was perfect the intonation was perfect the floyd rose was balanced um and I just thought there's a sign of a company that really takes that extra. Yeah, and obviously, bear in mind we're in Britain as well. So it's not only is it travelled from yeah, America yeah, and wherever else, you know. Travelled yeah, yeah. from the shop and across the, yeah, yeah. the ocean, sort of thing. Um, there was no signs that it had been out of the case, even though it had been photographed by Peach Guitars, whether it had been played. Is that where you got it? Is it yeah. Peach Guitars? Yeah. And it was immaculate. There wasn't a fingerprint on it. It was, it was spot on. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. Um, and I think that's a sign of a company, you know. It's, yeah. Um, so I suppose it's a bit like me and the Eastman thing. You, mm. the, the brand means something. It always means something. And every yeah. time you don't have the Fender, you don't have the Gibson, there is always that kind of like, oh, you know, yeah. it's, it's sort of, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Guitar players will know what I mean, though. Like even with my Eastmans, I think, oh, I wish that had Gibson on it sometimes. Yeah. But I think if, if you've got that Gibson or Fender logo, that gives you a bit of sat satisfaction. Yeah, it's almost like a window of like, well, it's Gibson or Fender, so I'm happy to accept more flaws. This is I what I was going to say. It, 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 when you've got that Fender or Gibson logo, you've got... You they, forgive more. They've things. got a license to make a few errors here. Yes, there. that's what I'm trying to say. And a lot of guitars come through and get missed through QC, even PRSs. Yeah. And we've seen it all, haven't we? Yeah, like, yeah, for know. sure, yeah. Um, but not when you've got a company like Sir that produce... They do produce a lot of guitars, I guess. I think there's only three dealers in the UK that sell them, which gives yeah. you a kind of a window into they're quite fussy who they want them to sell to. Um, yeah. Yes, you are paying a lot of money for them. Yeah, um, but, but but it's 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 quality above brand value sort yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah. and don't get me wrong, Sir is a hello. It, it's very well established at yeah. this point. Yeah. You know, their reputation does precede them sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and actually, the headstock is not one of the worst, is it? No, this, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> it, it is everything I've heard, read about, seen people talk about online with Sir. This thing is a hundred percent. The quality and the feel of it—it's that feel that you have in your hand yeah, when I'm you know. Back, yeah. yeah, taking the batteries just there as well. Yeah. Was it a nine volt? Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, it it doesn't it doesn't disappoint in any way in terms of the way the thing feels. You can't fault it. 
you know, you, you, I could not find anything that I could yeah. complain about. Oh, I guess I was just trying to sort of no. explain a bit of the, the thought process of why you yeah. choose a Sir over a custom shop vendor or, you know, any of the other brands. And it, I think it comes down to the same reason why I've chosen Eastman over other brands yeah. in the past. It's, it's that quality and feel that just makes it, it respects the money you pay for it. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yes, it's very expensive. But what you're getting is no excuses no. at all. And, and, and you find yourself picking it up constantly to play it. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm a Mark Knopfler fan and I've always wanted to own something like this. Yeah. And it is a guitar that can do it all, really. I mean, it's such a versatile instrument. Yeah. And I've yeah. got a Clapton strat and because I'm a fan of Eric Clapton. So yeah. if I want to play Dig Into Some Blues, like he, sort of his sort of stuff, I'll play that, you know. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And they're very different guitars, extremely different. Both yeah. Both of them very loud. And funny enough as well, right? But just as a side point, neither of them truly vintage kind of sounding instruments no, either. Because no, obviously this has got their way higher up. But yeah. however, both very capable of doing that classic, yeah. you know, classic thing. Yeah. But um, I don't get too hung up on him. Got the same vintage because I think I was brought up. Yeah. I was born in the seventies, but I was brought up really listening to music in the eighties and, and and listening to Eric Clapton late eighties and Mark Knopfler late eighties. Well, what did they use? They used these pickups. So so in my head. Uh, the late eighties sound is lace sensors, EMGs, so that's that's I'm happy hearing that and I'm happy playing that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I don't really necessarily want vintage sixties pickups. It doesn't bother me really. Yeah. Because I... the sort of stuff I play, you know, if I sit down and play this, all I do is start playing Telegraph Road or we you know Money for Nothing or something. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And when I pick up that, I start playing Eric Clapton stuff. So yeah. um, it's horses for horses. Sounds are just baked in there, and they sort of yeah, that's right. With. So, one, one thing that's worth mentioning as well, actually, now I've got this thing next to me, is uh, the fret size on the Clapton is tiny. They're barely there. Like, like yeah. obviously, you've got used to it, you love yeah. it. I would take years, I think, to get used <laughs> to it. Uh, but on this, they're, they're not like as big as a modern day medium jumbo. No way, no. no. But they are, they're, they're like the perfect Fender yeah. sort of fret size to me. Just nice. Uh, are they nickel or stainless steel on them? Do you know, um, just as a side note. Do you know, I don't know. I am, um, they. I wouldn't surprise me if they're stainless steel. Yeah, it seems to be a um, modern spec, doesn't it? But you've just got enough on there that you can just about feel the wood under your fingers. Yeah. Whereas with that, you are literally just rubbing maple. It is crazy, right, yeah. to be fair. Like, I'm sure it has, you know, like you said, you get used to these things. But yeah. But for me, the, the fret size on that, it's, yeah. it's one of them points to me on a guitar that maybe I'll grow out of it, maybe when I grow up a bit. Um, but it's super picky. It's one of the things yeah. I'm picky about. Yeah. You know, everyone has their own little things. Yeah. Fret size to me is, is massive. It's never really. been anything I'm interested in. It, it, it just it is what it is. And I'll, yeah. I'll just adapt to whatever, really. Yeah, Same yeah. with neck sizes, really. If I'm not you know, fussy with neck sizes, same. not as much. There's yeah. only very few I don't like, but fret size, I, I, if it's, I can't be long It's got to feel good down here for chords. It's got to feel, and I've got to be able to play an F without, you know. Perfect. I mean, yeah. It's so easy to play chords down here. And then up here, obviously, it goes a bit fatter, so, you know. But, you know, it just doesn't fret out at all. Yeah, you know, it's just... It's just a seriously good playing guitar kind of thing. Yeah, it just it's just made to... You can forget about everything and just play it. Is there any sounds in that thing that you feel are missing? Because obviously HSS is very versatile. What, what, what I would like, and I had this on a PRS Custom 24 years and years ago, is this position, which is the next one up from the last. Yeah. I'd quite like if that was just um, this one and single coil. Yeah. So I could get that very quacky, thinner sound. Yeah, yeah. But I've got a feeling it, it is the whole humbucker because it... <laughs> push compared to the compared two to... yeah definitely yeah so that's the only thing it would have been nice to have a coil split uh a little yeah. switch but i guess i could get that done maybe you could do yeah but it's not the end of the world it doesn't bother me yeah too but much. in terms of tonal choices that's about the only thing you feel is yeah is missing so i'm guessing with your gigs you've got a pretty wide variety of things that you're doing it's either nice and clean or it's quite heavy Right. There's not much in between, to be honest. So yeah, this yeah. will do that. That's yeah. no problem. With the HSS. Um, you've got you're less likely to break a string with one of these because the strings are clamped in here and they're clamped there. So you've got no... The strings aren't going over a severe angle or anything yeah. to wear down. And like you said, so there's no, nothing sharp there. There's nothing all. sharp. It's, it's flat as a pancake. Um, it's just really nicely well made. I mean, these, these, 
I think this Tremolo 11, they're 400 quid. They are expensive, the real it's ones. Crazy, There's so many yeah. copies of them, but the yeah. real thing like that is, yeah, yeah they are expensive. Yeah, but they've been around for years, and it was a great design. Um, intonating them is a, a pain as well, but yeah. this was already intonated, so I've never got to touch that again. Um, as long as I use the same gauge strings, these are just 10 to 46s, yeah. and they feel, see what you think, because you don't like 10s. Uh, I don't mind tens on a on a strat is, is okay to me. Yeah. Now they they feel fine to me there. Yeah. They do feel fine. I would probably go nine to forty six. Yeah. Because I, I like the hybrid. Thing. Keeping the frets polished as well will really help with bending, making the bending easier yeah. on the strat. The, the frets feel thing. great. The, the neck yeah. is. I, I've already said it, but. It, when a guitar hits a certain level of feel and quality, yeah. you just even know it. It's either in the guitar or it isn't. And yeah. this, for sure, as I kind of expected it to be, yeah. uh, is is definitely in it kind of thing. So thanks for uh, for sharing it. That's an no anyway. problem. Um, I did see that the the guitar this is based on, uh, as in Knopfler's Pensa, uh, yeah. was sold recently at auction as yeah. well. So at the moment, this is probably a very recognisable guitar. Million, something like that. Was it? Was it something like that? I I know a lot of his guitars did insanely well, some of you guys probably followed it. But yeah, so someone out there has his original and it's cool to see that, you know, that Sura is still making versions of it. Yeah. I've just noticed that neck um, cutaway Tilt, there as well. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. Didn't spot that so you've got a bit of a cutaway, make it easier. Makes it easier here, yeah. They do a black version of this exact guitar, so you've got all the gold hardware and just black body, which looks extremely cool. Yeah, that, that top there is nice. Well, I thought for the money, you may as well have a nice quilted top. Yeah, you've got the real <laughs> bind in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what the body actually is? is it, it's mahogany. Oh, mahogany, it looks yeah, like. mahogany. One piece as well. I'm not sure, really. It's it looks like it to me. I reckon it's a joint there, look. Oh, that'd be a good joint, though, because the grain there crosses over the yeah. middle. I don't know, to be honest. If it is a joint, it's, it's, it's a, a good probably one. one of the best joints I've seen. But yeah. It's just what you want, really. Yeah, I, I kind of expected the, the weight to be different as well, but... This is probably about the same weight as, as my own Fender Strat. Yeah. And like I said, that's got none of this on it or anything. Yeah. Master volume, master tone, I should have said earlier as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the only thing that I always find weird, right? You see, hang on, if I can get the camera into that. This is nothing like a criticism or anything. I just find it weird where the fretboard comes off the neck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so you get an extra fret. an extra bit there. Yeah, I, I always call, feel that that's like a little diving board thing on the end of the thing. Yeah, it is a bit odd. I don't know why they do that. Yeah, obviously it gives you an extra fret, doesn't it? And I'm not even sure if the pickups are adjustable or whether they're just mounted to the body. Yeah. Oh, there's a spring under there. Oh, okay. just feel yeah. it. But I've not adjusted anything. You know, yeah, it's, it's just like perfect, that. does it? It is, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. So where, where do you think you'll go from there then? Obviously that is a top tier guitar. Sell the house, probably. <laughs> Um, no, I mean this. This is like I've been, like in terms of like even modding it, or do you think there's another guitar that would sit really well with it? I don't think I'd mod it. Sort of no, I, I wouldn't want to touch this. I, you know, yeah. like I said about the coil split, but I don't need it. I've not. Yeah. You know, it's just being picky. That's fair. Um, but no, um, I can't really see what I could get which is better than this ever. You know, and I just love it, and because I love Mark Knopfler so much, his playing yeah. and that. It, it does scream. Not the fact really, he used yeah. one of these for so many years, yeah. and this was his go-to guitar for a long, long time, just says it all to me. Yeah, know? yeah. Uh, and the joy about sitting at home playing a few Knopfler riffs, you know, um, and sounding like his live performances, you know. Just... Something like that, anyway. And I just found myself trying to learn more riffs of his and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And... Did you, what's quite funny for me, watching you do the Knopfler stuff, a bit earlier yeah. is that in that position there that's almost the strat in the other position you know what i mean it is with, yeah it's all yeah, very it very is. similar so even though you can't split it. that down no that sound is there it is it's there. just in a different place as it would be on the strat you know if you do want that extra boost you can hear that's quite yeah, yeah. Right. so one more thing for anyone that made it to the end of the video um, when we were talking about Knopfler, have you got any tips for playing money for nothing <laughs> yeah because it's so hard to get it right don't bother okay so um, and we can hear how that sounds on this guitar as well with money for nothing it's all about this hand not this hand yeah so he's doing this <laughs> I'll, I'll have a stab at it I, 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 so i show what i did first you can tell me what i did wrong absolutely <laughs> but i don't I, I can't play it right now but i can sort of get a gem so I, I always sort of like try and get the like that feel first yeah. before I try it. And so 
going at that. Yeah. But but it's the rhythm because it's not straight so, down. So his fingers are moving all the time. <laughs> it's trying to turn your brain off. So hard. Yeah, it's trying to. Often we worry about what we're doing over here, but we've got to yeah. worry about what we're doing here. But so. the thing is, because it's not like I've been sort of practicing like the blues thing of just tapping a note while you're playing. I've mm. kind of got that, but that's nothing like that. That's no. not what he's doing. Um, what he's actually playing isn't hard. It's the sound he's getting. No one can seem to replicate it. Hundred percent. And it's in the finger picking. <laughs> Just, there's way more going on with the notes than I thought there. The beginning bit, as well as the whole. I think the thing with this is the reality is it's just one of them riffs that's way harder than you think. Yeah. You just get to, I thought we'd get like a real good. No. Nope. There's what you do, and then it no. all makes sense. It's but, all in this hand. It's all there. And it, you know. Yeah, but but there is way more notes going on than I thought as well. Like as well as. That. And of course, he's got some harmonics in there because he was playing it with yeah. a cocked wah wah. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you play it with the cop wire, it makes a difference as well because you get those How extra harmonics, you, you know, because you, you, you get all those. those. Which is typical, yeah. not very. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But yeah, fair deals to him to come up with something that I've literally never heard anyone else play as best him. No, no, exactly, yeah. yeah. No one. I've, you know, even guys who tutorials on it. Yeah. It doesn't sound like No, it, it doesn't. That, that's that's yeah. what I, and I've heard you bet so, before today. Yeah. And I, you know, you, you definitely. So that's his legacy, isn't it? It's just like, it's all in the fingers. And that's just proof that he's all in the fingers, yeah. isn't it? You know, with some people. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So especially you know him, like you said. So yeah. sorry about that, folks. There is no key nugget to getting that riff right. It is just not. There's there no magic just beans. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right then. So I know we've had a few glitches in this video. I will just mention that now. So sorry about that. But if you've made What's it to the end, it's um you know we're recording in a different place. And thanks for it's it. live, folks. This happens exactly. And thanks for letting me uh, come around to your no place. Today. It's been pretty cool. And uh, I will see you again very very soon.